I get asked quite often, which Rolex should I buy? And to be honest with you, it's a very difficult question because you know, your love and taste in Rolex and watches in general is very subjective. But in this video, I'm gonna go over five key areas to help you decide which Rolex you should buy. So those five key areas that I wanna talk about are popularity, size, newness, discontinued or likelihood to be discontinued, and then lastly, the price. So the fun begins. I have 10 watches, uh, Rolex watches in front of me here, and I'm basically gonna rank them in order using those five key areas. So popularity. Now, it's completely subjective, and this, this one is a bit of fun, but look, popularity, I mean, let's do some shifting around and see where we end up here, okay? But give me a minute. So I've put together what I would imagine the kind of rough general consensus around popularity and it's completely debatable. So let me know if you completely disagree. However, I think the top three are pretty cemented at the top of the pile, right? First of all, a Panda Daytona. I would argue that if you're looking to get a Rolex and you're thinking about popularity, the Panda Daytona is, is it, it, it has to be, it's one of the most difficult Rolexes to get. This is a 116500 reference, which is the now discontinued model. Um, it's the, the newer one is the 126500 with the new bezel insert, which actually looks great. But I think the most popular Rolex of what I have here of the 10 Rolexes is this. And closely in second place, I would probably say is the Pepsi GMT. It's super hyped and not not for no reason. It, it is a beautiful looking watch. It fits amazing on the wrist. It wears incredibly well with most outfits, sporty and dress. Hence why I think it's up there in second place. And I think closely followed is another GMT and it is the Batman. I think this came out in 2013, the first reference of it. And for the last 10, 11 years, it has been one of the most demanded Rolexes from the AD and also on the grey market. So that's why I have put that in at number three. Now the rest was the rest was quite kind of difficult. I put a sub date in at four over a blue sky dweller and then I've got a sub no date at six, a blue date just on oyster fluted at seven, a Pepsi meteorite at eight because it's like yeah it, it's just it's a very rare watch. The meteorite dial is super super hard to come by. The white gold bracelet and case is not everyone's cup of tea. Um, I've put a white sky dweller further down the pile and then also a vintage day day at the bottom. But it's interesting as I go through this video, you're gonna see some of the watches at the bottom of the pile drastically shift to the, to the top three places. And look, some people don't care about popularity, some people care about the actual watch itself. And the next key area that I wanna talk about is the size. So let me do some rearranging. Okay, so there we have it. This isn't like a best to worst, this is a smallest to biggest case size. So we have a 36 millimeter day date all the way up to a 42 millimeter sky dweller. And I think it's crucial to buy a watch that looks good on you and fits you well. It's all well and good buying a watch that's popular and looks amazing and you know everyone wants it, it's a good investment, but actually it's crucial to buy something that you want to actually wear and looks good on you. So, like I said, it's not a it's not a scale of good to bad. It's it's more just a size order. So, you know, the, the day date is is perfect for a guy that's maybe slimmer, has smaller wrists, and you know, back in the day, 20 plus years ago, a 36 millimeter Rolex would be considered pretty average size. And now we have 44 millimeter, 42 millimeter sky dwellers, even like the modern classics you know, you've got a submariner that's now 41 millimeters which is quite a big watch so you have the 36 you've got two gmt's here at 40 millimeter the daytona is 40 millimeter this gmt is 40 these submariners like i said are 41 millimeter that was back in 2020 when the new reference changed the case became a little bit bigger the lugs and the bracelet became a little bit slimmer to kind of counter the increase in size but these are 41 millimeters maybe not exactly but um, they just 41s, obviously, 41 millimeter, and the Skydwell is both at 42. I think it completely depends on you how, look, there are some people that I know that can rock a Skydweller 42 and it looks perfect on them. It looks as good as me wearing a 36 millimeter watch and that's just because of the size of our wrists and arms and bodies. So it depends on your body type and 
what you like wearing. You might be a slimmer guy like me, but actually you like a big watch. And, it, you know, like I said, it is subjective, but I thought it'd be interesting to show size order. I wish I had some bigger, I wish I had the deep sea challenge at this end just to show you how ridiculous some watches are in size. Okay, so what is next? Newness. What do I mean by newness? Well, the year of the watch is very, very important to a lot of people. Maybe not the vintage collectors, but the year of the watch is very important. For example, a 2024 date just might be better for them versus a 2019 GMT Pepsi. It, again, it's all down to personal taste. But anyway, let me rearrange these into year order. Okay, I think that is now in year order from newest to oldest, and it's interesting that the day date has gone back down to where it was at the start. But this, the newness in the year around a watch is just, some people like to have the newest, latest watch because it's in Rolex warranty, um, they know that it's completely unworn, and people like the newest things. It's why people buy brand new cars, it's why people buy brand new houses. It's just, we all as human, well, most of us as humans psychologically want to be the first, we want to be the original owner of something. So if that is you and you want a 2024 watch, you can buy a watch like this, Blue Sky Dweller, or a watch like this, a Blue Date Just 41. What you can't buy anymore, for example, is this Day Date 36. This is a 1991 year. You, you can buy a 36 mm Day Date, but you can't buy this exact reference, and you can't buy this dial color anymore. While it is important for some people to have the latest and shiniest newest thing, Rolexes are made to last 100 years, and they are built so well these days that actually, the year doesn't matter so much. For example, this is a 2019 GMT Pepsi. You know, you could go for a 2024 GMT Pepsi, visually exactly the same. There's a five year difference, but, and also there's a, there's a price difference, which I'll come on to later, but you'll probably notice here that all, apart from the day day, are modern Rolexes, and they are all within the last five years. That's because of the, the kind of watch market that I sell to, but this is uh, 2024, 2024, 2023, 23, 22, 22, 22, 2019s, and then the 1991 day date at the end. So for whatever reason, if you're thinking about whether a watch is gonna be discontinued or not, this might be something that you'd be interested in. There's a lot of debate around whether you should buy watches for investment purposes, whether you should consider whether a watch is gonna be discontinued or not, and that's why you buy it. But the truth is some people do buy watches on the basis that it might get discontinued. Each to their own, whatever floats your boat. So let me just reorder these into what's already been discontinued, but what might also be discontinued in the near future. Okay, th this, this is very difficult. I, think, I, don't, I don't think these watches are the best to talk about which watch is gonna be discontinued or not. And also some of these are discontinued. This 36 millimeter model is discontinued. This is an old Panda reference. Um, uh, uh, this, they, this Sky Dweller is discontinued. It's a 326 reference. So let's go with this. So um, you, we've all heard the hype around GMT Pepsi's being discontinued. Maybe, I, I don't know. Uh, we're all guessing it, it might be. Of all these watches, which would be discontinued first? It's probably either this Pepsi or this Pepsi, the meteorite dial. I could imagine this might go first just because it's a super rare dial and I think Rolex are cutting back on uh, production of meteorite dials. So I've put the two Pepsis at the top just because it's quite fitting with the talk at the moment. A Batman, potentially, it's been running for, like I said before, 11 years, right? So could this be discontinued? I think there's more likelihood that that gets discontinued than the two subs down here. Can't imagine the Panda Daytona is gonna get discontinued. We've just seen a new Daytona uh, line be released in 2023, the 126 references. So I can't see that going. The Sky Dwellers, there was a new reference this year, was it 336? Or was it last year? I think it was the last year. And then the day just like, it's so, it's so, basic Rolex that why would they discontinue a day just? What I will say is d don't worry about whether a watch is gonna get discontinued. Just buy a watch that you like, that you will enjoy wearing and I don't think you can go wrong if you do that. It's like with a house, buy a house you would wanna live in otherwise you'd be miserable in it. I don't really have much more to say about watches being discontinued. 
The last topic is quite an interesting one, the price. And actually, I have to be clear, this is grey market price, not AD price. This isn't retail. This is the prices, for example, that I'm selling these watches at. So it might be different if you're watching this in a year's time, but as of now, as of July 2024, this is correct. Okay, I think we have the price from highest, no shock, the GMT white gold meteorite, all the way to the lowest, the 2022 sub no date. The price is important. Now, like I said at the start of the video, people do ask me all the time, what, which watch, which Rolex should I buy? And one of the first, uh, well, questions I ask is, you know, what is your budget? What, what, what sort of uh, money are you playing with? And that will very quickly dictate what you're able to purchase. So anything under, for example, 10,000 pounds, you have the bottom three watches here. And then we go from roughly 13K up to, let's stop at 20K. With these five watches here, you can buy steel sky dwellers, you can buy GMTs, you can buy a vintage full yellow gold day day. And then lastly, you have a watch that's over 40K, about 41, 42K. So price is important because it will cut out very quickly a large portion of watches that you're unable to purchase. You've kind of got to think of all the all the topics in combination as a whole, right? So you've got to think about the price, you know, what do I like? What size do what size do I want? I like new watches, so I'm going to get a 2024. You've kind of got to think of all these different things together which might then help you decide that you want a 2024 brand new watch that is pretty popular, easy to sell if you wanted to in the future and is a good size for your wrist. And that might be this blue dial day just 41. Um, or you have a bigger budget and you want a Panda Daytona and you're, you're fine to pay a little over 20K for a steel watch. Uh, if that's your cup of tea, absolutely go for it. Just to quickly go through the prices of these, we have, like I said, around 42K, around 21 and a half. We have, oh, that's not right. I got that wrong. That's not, that's below here. Sorry, excuse me, excuse me, excuse me. That actually, actually sits down here. So I did get that wrong. Well done to anyone that spotted that, but I think that would be, actually, no, do you know what? <laughs> it's still wrong. Oh, goodness. Right, okay, I think. I think we're right. This is good news for people that want a GMT Batman because it's gone all the way from here down to here. But just to go through the order, 42K, around 21 and a half, 17 and a half, uh, 16, 16 and a half, 15, 14 and a half, uh, 13 and a half, 13, 50, 12 and a half, just under 10, just under 10 and around nine. For me personally, if I had to consider all these five key areas, not that discontinued and uh, popularity really matter for me, but if I had to consider all five, for me, I would go for the Panda Daytona Steel and also the GMT Master 2 uh, Batman, and that's just personally because I like these watches, uh, they're new enough for me, 2019's fine for me. Uh, Price-wise, uh, yeah, fine, it's affordable, so that's what I would go for, but obviously you guys might be completely different. I hope this helps in some way. Um, please like the video and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.